In today's session, I want to discuss the issues pertaining to grievance management. So, when you talk about grievance management, what are we talking about? Uh, I think you all know that in, uh, employees tend to complain in one way or another um, within the organization, but also sometimes they can also complain outside the organization. But in what actually happens is that uh, whilst in the course of employment, employees are encouraged to complain within the mechanisms that are there within the organization. So they might have a number of complaints within the organization, but if they want to air them out, there should be a way of how these complaints can be attended to and where to present such kind of complaints. And in any union, could be a family, a football club, any institution, they tend to be complaints. And uh, there should be mechanisms how you are going to handle such kind of complaints. And we know within our organization, I think in another session, I was discussing issues of uh, disciplinary management to say, if an employee has done any misconduct, the employer would uh, sanction a disciplinary process or put up a disciplinary process and until the employee is sanctioned and also is in, um, given a penalty, could be dismissal, termination or warning transfers among other things as we saw in the other session. But now this is when an employer has got an, a complaint over an employee. But also there are circumstances now whereby an employee might also have some complaints against the employer. So the employer, uh, the employee has also a right to complain over such kind of um, processes. Because if he doesn't complain, then he might find there are a lot of consequences which could be there, can affect the organization in one way or another. So it's like you're in a family and someone has got a lot of complaints or issues with the other party, you might find that things are not going well within the family. Maybe they don't talk to each other and all that. And there's nothing that can move within the family as an institution. So that's what we need to appreciate. So what as the, the employer has got in, uh, the disciplinary process as a mechanism of uh, resolving complaints that he has over the employees, the organization also has to have a policy or guidelines on how it is going to handle complaints that an employee might have over an employer to say how can he handle such kind of complaints and this is now the purpose of this particular session that we want to look at the number of complaints that could be there that can force an employee to complain formally to an employer because what we need to under appreciate is if such kind of complaints are not communicated formally then if the employees are to react informally you might find that there are a lot of consequences like we talk about ghost law whereby the employees tend to slow down the way they work because they're not happy within the organization and their, their complaints are not being heady uh, they are not being uh, given a chance, a platform to state their grievances or their issues. So you might find that uh, they might uh, tend to be a number of uh, uh, ghost law issues whereby the employee doesn't work hard for the organization or maybe coming to work very late, um, going out very early, having long lunches, having long tea breaks. A number of things could be drivers breakdowns, you just see of breakdowns. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that tend to happen, and the organizations tend to suffer in one way or another. And the organizations that makes their employees happy 
I think you might find that uh, the employees are able to be productive and also they contribute to the success of the organization. But once the employees are not happy within the organization, then you might find there are a lot of consequences. But now, in this session, what we want to look at the, uh, the number of complaints that could be there that employees might have towards their employers. So some of the complaints uh, which maybe have to be brought to the attention of the employer could be issues of salary, for example, salary disparities, Employees could be complaining about salaries, maybe other employees earning more, other employees earning less, and all that. You find, one might find that in, uh, there are a lot of uh, disparities in terms of who is earning what. Maybe the salaries are not linked to qualifications, the salaries are not linked to grades. Maybe someone on a lower grade is earning more than someone who is on a higher grade. Of course, we can justify in different aspects, but you should be able to find a mechanism of how you're going to remunerate your employees so that these kind of issues are resolved. Sometimes expert race earning more, or else maybe the locals are earning less, among other things. But there's a lot that goes into salary complaints, whereby people uh, who have just joined, maybe they had to negotiate their salary, and now you find that they're earning more than those who were there before and the, the older employees or the employees who have been in organization for some time you might find that they are complaining in one way or another so this is some of the things that we should be able to appreciate to say there are a number of complaints and also apart from that there is also issue of lack of training for example yeah could be an employer is not sending his or her employees for further studies could be long-term trainings could be short-term trainings or even within the organization there are no trainings for example uh, yeah, or, or, or sometimes uh, it could be some kind of favoritism so that is only a certain department or certain categories of employees who are going for training so this kind of um, uh, dissatisfaction tend to lead to a lot of stress and also I can lead to burnout and employees cannot be able to work hard within the organization. So there should be a mechanism of how you are able to manage the trainings of the employees in a professional way, but also having maybe following the policy, but also having a tool or a guide on how you're going to do the training requirements. But also sometimes uh, could be issues of uh, lack of promotion, yeah, could be lack of promotion. The employees are not having an opportunity to be promoted from one position to the other, and this is also, leads, it leads to stagnation, stagnation of one in one position, yeah, because maybe the person has all the qualifications, has all the experience, but is not being promoted to higher positions. It could be because the positions are not there, but sometimes you can do functional reviews just to re-establish the position so that they're able to, uh, I'll give an example, someone could be an HR officer, uh, you might find that he's reporting to uh, HR manager, yeah? But now you can do a functional review to say, okay, you're now assistant HR manager. So you'll be putting to the HR manager. By video of change, just changing the position from human resource officer to assistant HR manager or deputy HR manager, you find that the, the person might feel comfort to say, I know, I think uh, there's a matter of uh, recognition that maybe I'm, yeah, I'm close to being a manager. So, but also sometimes whenever uh, there's a vacancy above there, you might find that all the employees uh, being good from outside the organization and not internal, uh, the internal candidates who are qualified for the position, they're not being picked despite being performers and all that. So this is also one area which can be uh, looked into issues of favoritism. Yeah, you know, favoritism could be related to training, could be related to promotion, could be related to salary um, provision, could be related to among other things. So there's uh, a kind of favoritism. But also at the same time, uh, employees tend to call complain related to issues pertaining to uh, maybe the terms and conditions of service of the organization to say maybe the organization is not adhering to the terms and conditions of service. The terms and conditions of service is talking something else and you might find that the employ employer is doing contrary to something that is not in the terms and conditions of service 
and you ask yourself to say, why would you have something in the terms and conditions service, but you're not able to implement it? Why can't you review the terms and conditions of service so that they speak to what you can be able to offer or what you can afford as an organization? So that's, that's one important area that we should also be looking at to say, if an organization is not able to do what is in the terms and conditions of service, it might lead to frustration. Or maybe the terms and conditions of service are being applied only to few individuals and for some to also access such kind of things, now they are being referred to the terms and conditions of service. No, the terms and conditions of service doesn't allow that. And now you are like to say, now come on, how others are able to enjoy the same privilege, yet some of us are not able to get the same privilege. I'll give an example. There could be an issue of maybe uh, some organizations you might find that someone maybe is a secretary yeah to they may be the CEO maybe could be allocated a motor vehicle for example yeah but you might find senior managers are not having a motor vehicle for example and because the CEO has used the discretion to provide such kind of a benefit to the, that kind of employee and then for no justification you might find that it brings this party to say why are you applying this condition to this employee only of course we all know that there could be other duty facilitating benefits but this should be justifiable yeah? and we should be able to understand to say no everybody can be able to agree yeah so it could be the, the non adherence to terms and conditions service non this to labor laws non here non here non adherence to uh, labor laws, and they had adherence to uh, policies. Uh, these are some of the things that also maybe tend to frustrate the employees. Yeah, you might find maybe issues of remittance of pension, for example. They are saying to uh, the employees are being deducted pension, but you might find that the employer is not remitting. So that could be a problem, for example, to say. But how come um, we are being told that we are supposed to get this, but we are not able to? get this particular thing so these are some of the things that also are very very important for an organization to look at to say which policies which laws which um, um guidelines maybe do with the government for example that we should be able to adhere to we looked at it when we had COVID, for example there were some employers who could say you know someone who is not vaccinated should not be able to enter any premises yet maybe there was no government policy to say there was no nothing like mandatory vaccination of the COVID, for example so you find that such kind of things when they come in without a proper policy and guidelines and if the policy is inconsistent with the national guidelines or against the labor laws you might find that is a problem so these are some of the areas which are so very very important for an organization to look into to say are we really adhering to the labor laws to the policies whether national or also the organization policies or the terms and conditions of service it could also be inconsistencies in decision making this also could be a form of complaint that employees could say you're doing different uh, decisions on similar issues and employees are like to say why are these things are happening within the organization i thought maybe this is the best way last time th we did the same thing but we were not accepted this time we have done the same thing maybe it has been accepted and uh, what was the reason why that time but maybe the funds were available everything was available but it's just a matter of for the senior management just to say we just want to exercise power to say we are in power and we just want to make sure that we, we should feel us to say we are in control of the resources so these are some of the things that are also very very important that we should be looking at when you are talking about decision making inconsistencies in decision making the way you are treating other people you find that is different from the way you are treating other people the work environment could also be a source of grievances how are you having the work environment maybe it's too hot the work environment is not conducive for work yeah the relationships that are there they are not good the way the managers addresses people uh, maybe this too harsh is a lot of insults so it will create an unbearable environment that the employees cannot be able to work within such kind of an environment. The work tools, for example, people would be using tools which are not good, for example, could be a motor vehicle, yeah, maybe every time it has to be pushed for it to uh, to start the engine, to start the engine. So all those things, uh, how are you 
looking after the employees in terms of their week tools, uh, clothing, and all that. Because these things, if they're not in place, you might find that employees can be uh, complaining a lot in that regard. Relationships with the fellow employees, yeah. How people do relate within the organization, a lot of conflicts, in fighting, and in, you know. I've gone to some organizations and uh, whereby you find that a new employee has joined the organization, people are like to say, why are you coming here? Hmm? Why are you coming here? I thought you, you have left organization X and you have come to this organization. Why? Uh, no, here this is terrible. If this doesn't go well. This, and now they are, from first day, the employee has been uh, given a lot of information bad information about the organization and the employee, the employee cannot be able to uh, handle that and uh, go back to his wife or her wife, uh, husband to say, ah, no, I think that environment is not good for me. There are a lot of issues that happens and I've heard a lot of things. So you, you, you are preparing the employee to fail and maybe he can also resign within a short period of time. And those are some of the things that can also be relationship with the customers, for example, relationship with the bosses, could be issues related to salary and benefits, for example, yeah, maybe the benefits are not applied uh, in light of the terms of the service or they are applied discriminatory, health and safety, I've already discussed that kind of issues, which are very, very important to look at to say, how is the safety of the employees? The question of safety and health of the employees uh, it should be of paramount. The welfare of the employees, it's issues of sexual harassment. There is a lot of sexual harassment within the organization. Could be a basis for complaint. Yeah, complaints. A lot of employees can be compl discrimination. I've already discussed that to say uh, how people are discriminated within the organization. Changes in policy, for example. You, you, you had a very good policy. But you find that you have just changed abruptly for no apparent reason, or maybe the engagement was not good, so that people under effort to understand to say why are you changing the policy transfers, for example, if you are transferring the employees to another organization or to another branch, for example. So the way conditions, the way, you know, there are a lot of inappropriate application of disciplinary process, for example, you're supposed to do this, the policy is saying this and you're doing contrary to the policy. Yeah, maybe the person was supposed to be called for a disciplinary hearing, but you're not doing that and also issues of performance appraisals, how are you appraising the employees? Yeah, maybe biases, would be positive biases, negative bias towards the same employees. Some employees are not performers, but you find that they are complaining, I mean, they are scoring highly and they are now telling their friends to say, no, you know, um, there's no way I can live with this organization. I can always be here and uh, I know where to touch, yeah, you know, and I know where to touch and uh, there's no way I can be fired from this organization. But yet the person is not a performer, but you find always oh, scoring high during performance appraisals, issues of, of workload and also issues, poor relationships and also issues of um, Transparency, could, yeah, a lot of things. Can then, everything not happening, um, in, in a transparent manner, yeah, leading to a lot of speculations and all that. So maybe even just engaging few people and to make decisions. You find maybe a lower person uh, is given a responsibility uh, at the expense of a senior person, for example. Maybe it could be the uh, executive director, for example, of an organization is speaking to you to a manager. Yet between the manager and the executive director, there is a director there. Yeah, between the executive director and the, the manager, there is a director. But then now the CEO is talking directly to the accounts clerk. Yeah, but then there is director, there is a manager there, there is an accountant there. Yeah, so you find that is this kind of the, the, this lower person is excited that he's talking directly to the CEO. So such kind of, um, it brings a lot of antagonism amongst the employees within the organization. So what is important, uh, therefore, is to ensure that these things are managed properly because the effect is that it brings emotional and psychological torture amongst the employees within the organization and the end result. The end result or the consequences of all these things, of mismanaging these things, 
the end result is that it tends to uh, the employees tend to resign or number one would be the reduction in productivity which is worse yeah you find that the employees are on a go slow for example yeah so there is reduction in productivity strikes yeah could be strikes people could be complaining a lot and they are like no i think enough is enough you should go on a strike and also could be work related uh, accidents because they are daydreaming yeah because the person is always uh, affected in one another so it's always daydreaming and it leads to work-related accidents, litigations. Yes, people tend to complain a lot and also um, um, uh, the others could sue. You know, it's possible for an employee to sue whilst working for the same organization because he, so he, he will say enough is enough or even if they fire me. But I think for this one, I have to sue them. Yeah, for example, reduction in salary for no apparent reason. So he's saying, no, I better be fired than accepting this. Yeah, because I've got the light. Yeah, so we'll see. When you're talking about having the procedure in disciplinary process, you know, you can have first, you have to discuss with your manager, for example, if I've got a complaint. You can, have, you can discuss with the director, for example. You can discuss with the CEO. You can discuss with the board, for example. Yeah. So you can present your complaints through that kind of... You can have a policy or a grievance procedure on how you are going to communicate your complaints. But once you have seen that they are not helping you in one way or another, you can go to court and say to say, ah, no, they haven't fired me, but they have deprived me of this privilege which I had for no apparent reason. Yeah. For no apparent reason, but they have deprived me of this particular. Uh, maybe an employee was indebted to a motor vehicle already communicated in the terms and conditions of service and also in the offer letter. But now, from nowhere, the motor vehicle is withdrawn as a benefit. So you might find that such kind of uh, complaint can someone can sue to say, No, I was entitled to this kind of benefit, and uh, yeah, it could be air time, it could be fuel, it could be anything, yeah. A benefit but maybe the employer has just withdrawn so you find that you can be able to complain to say no i think this is my light i was supposed to attend there's no justifiable reason that has been provided and uh, yet maybe other employees have been provided and now you are like to say why other employees have been provided yet myself i'm not being provided this kind of uh, privilege so there are a lot of challenges that tend to happen within the organization but what, what is important for us to appreciate is this have to be uh, addressed yeah so there should be a way of having solutions to say how do you mitigate it against these particular ch challenges i think the bible if you read the bible um, matthew 18 verse 15 to 17 the bible says if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if he listens to you you have gained your brother but if he doesn't not he does not listen to you take one or two brothers along with you and that every charge may be established by evidence of two or three witnesses if he refuses to listen to them tell it to the church let it it be to you as a gentile and as a taxi collector so this is in mean matthews the bible that's what the matthew to say just to emphasize on the need for steps of how you can be able to raise your grievances and and complaints within there so the bible if this is even is acknowledging of the need for us to follow certain steps when you are to complain within the organization so this is what matthews in on matthews 18 verses 15 to 17 is saying so it's one of the important things that we should be able to appreciate and in, as a solution now we have got these problems now how do you resolve this kind of salary disparities there's this co complaints and also the employees are always complaining and maybe there have been strikes before there could be or rooming strikes could be there's a danger that it could be strikes, but also there are a lot of resignations, for example. Yeah? So the, the tools that you're going to be able to use for you to manage um, that, that kind of um, um, uh, a problem. One, you should have an open door policy whereby you should be able to uh, allow employees to come to you, uh, maybe the director, your ICO, your board chair, people should be able to be free to come to you and be able to air their grievances for example yeah from that you are able to 
uh, close up issues because you're able to listen to them and be able to engage them. Even if you have good union, for example, yeah, the union should be able to come to you and be able to present their issues. But also you can do what we call engagement service or employee satisfaction service. How engaged are the employees? How satisfied are the employees? Just to ensure that, and and these are some of the things that we even change consult group would be able to do. Yeah, you can also develop what we call a grievance policy, for example. Yeah, you can develop a policy, a grievance policy on how. Likewise, when you are talking about disciplinary process, you can also have a disciplinary policy, but also you can also have a grievance policy whereby where and how employees are supposed to complain how to complain and when to complain and where to complain. These are some of the things that mitigation for you to manage the institution. And also the, the sometimes you can change some policies because people are complaining over policies and how you are doing, but also maybe changing the way you are implementing some of the policies within the organization. Be fair to the employees, how you are treating them, treat them as equal. Issues of mediation, yeah, you can have a mediator, yeah. I think we just saw recent uh, ESCOM uh, having a, an mediation with their employees. I think we read in the newspapers to say ESCOM have engaged um, uh, Kanyongoro, if not Kanchezera, to mediate uh, issues pertaining to salary increases within the yeah, because there is a union and also there are the management, but these people, they have to be talking to each other. They have engaged a lawyer to yeah, mediate upon them. So as the Emmanuel Shinovi or Change Consulting Group, we also support you in terms of um, mediation. Whenever two parties are not agreeing with each other, they can be able to come to us and we can be able to help them, to engage them and also maybe to mediate. Because the most important thing is to understand what are the complaints the employees have, and what uh, the position of management, what is the financial position of the organization, what is the policy saying within the organization, and maybe what are the, the donors saying, and how do we marry this, uh, how do we reach a consensus, and how do we agree, what, are the, what is the effect of prolonged um, animosity within the organization. So these are some of the things that are very, very important for us to appreciate. But also, there's, uh, you can also, yeah, as I said, you can change the policies, for example. Uh, you can also do exit interviews yeah, when employees are leaving the organization. Because ex is some resignations could lead to say, I think there's a problem here. Why a lot of employees are leaving the organization? So you can be able to have exit interviews, for example. You can have suggestion boxes, for example. Employees have to suggest to say, how do we manage better the organization? But these things have to be put in a free, like you have a team building, you can have a suggestion box. You have to suggest a solutions to the issues as a team. So that they are working together. They should also provide solutions. They identify the problems, they identify the solutions, and have a session to discuss all these issues and be able to and have an action plan on how we are going to implement these such kind of issues, which are feasible, which are financially feasible, yeah, amongst other things. So this is sometimes you find that when employees are resigning, it's funny. I read one resignation letter or a notice of resignation where this employee just said bye bye bye, yeah, <laughs> without mentioning anything. To say maybe my, I'm resigning because of ABCD or I'm resigning with a family defect. No, no, no. Just, the whole paragraph was just buy, buy, buy. Yeah, like that. Your CCC, uh, maybe Manu Nishinovi, he's gone. Yeah, so because of frustration that the employees have. Yeah, and also sometimes if I find, find, find that, that, that um, there was also, an, I think, an issue in Mzuzu whereby an employee, I think he was at the city council, yeah, um, whereby because she was not getting, she was not getting salary. She had to pack all her things and want to go to the office and pack them at the car park uh, with the, the her bed, the umbrellas and the um, chavo banners and also everything that she had. Her TV was there and everything to say. I'm failing to pay rent, so I'm here. Yeah, or, uh, maybe you can pay me now because I don't have anywhere to stay. My landlord is chasing me. So sometimes employees can do awkward things and they're like, why are people doing this? And also I think there was another case whereby an employer had parked his car at the main gate and off he went. Oh, no, he was just there in the morning trying to clean her teeth and all that. So these are some of the important things that should be able to, when employees are angered or they are frustrated, they can do unimaginable things. So we should be able to manage employees better in terms of how we should be able best manage the employees. Thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel 
ask other people to follow my YouTube channel and be able to learn a lot pertaining to HRM, procurement, general management, among other general issues. Thank you so much.